This week, Superbase announced a feature that I had been waiting a long time for. Firebase Auth for Superbase. The reason this is so important for Flutterflow developers is because we've been trying to solve the age-old question, how do you use Flutterflow as intended with all the Firebase features and deep integration that makes Flutterflow so powerful, while avoiding Firestore in favor of the more flexible, more powerful, and more cost-effective Superbase? So when I saw the update email from Superbase last Thursday, I was already thinking of titles for this video like Superbase just changed the game or all of our Flutterflow problems are now solved because this problem has been very close to my heart for a long time. Superbase never actually responded to my request to get early alpha access, so I'm only seeing this for the first time with the rest of the proletariat in general availability this week. But now I've had a proper chance to play with it, and so in this video, I'm going to give you my take on the question. Can we now use Firebase and Superbase in Flutterflow together without any friction? This is a topic that I've had quite a lot of inquiries about over the last couple of months, and it is a really important one. So first, I just want to take a step back and explain why this is so important. When you first come to Flutterflow, you will be guided toward Firebase. This is actually fine. You shouldn't confuse Firebase with Firestore. Firebase gives you a huge amount of features and it has a really generous free tier. If you're hellbent on not using Firebase at all in your Flutterflow project, you might want to consider whether Flutterflow is even the right choice for you, because maybe Flutter or even React Native could suit your needs just as well. Either way, there's going to be a lot of custom coding that you'll have to do. There's a lot going on in the background in Flutterflow that always seems to tie back to Firebase and the Google ecosystem in general. And remember, even Android and Flutter itself are Google products. When people complain about Firebase, too expensive, no relational database, terrible search capabilities, etc. They're usually complaining about Firestore. And from that point of view, I personally agree. Superbase is a superior database to Firestore. But if you're not using row level security in your Superbase database, you might as well be putting your money in a bank made of marshmallows. Delicious, but not particularly secure. So how do you turn on RLS if you're using a Firebase token? And will this new update from Superbase solve this? Yes but only if you satisfy all of the prerequisites. By the way, if you're finding the content useful, please consider subscribing as I am aiming to make new video every week. Superbase is based on the PostgreSQL database and Postgres requires a role. An example of a role is authenticated and you can have other roles like admin, which I do in my Flutterflow starter kit, but Firebase doesn't work in this way. So Superbase have told us that what we need to do is embed a field in the Firebase JWT token payload called role that gets sent from your app to Superbase. Firebase auth tokens don't come with a role field by default, and the only way to add one is to use server-side code to generate something called a custom claim. You have to use server-side code to do this. There's no doing this in the Firebase console, and so you'll need a cloud function at minimum, one that ideally triggers on user creation to apply the custom claim. So far, this is doable. You can write a cloud function in Flutterflow, no big deal. However, Flutterflow obviously hasn't caught up to this new development, if they ever will. So even though now you could theoretically use Superbase with Firebase Auth exclusively via API calls, that's not ideal. Because we want to use the built-in Flutterflow Superbase integration, right? So you'd need to write a custom Flutterflow action, set up a listener on the Firebase Auth token, and then apply the Firebase token to the Superbase request headers whenever the token changes, and then initiate this listener in main.dart. Okay, no big thing. One cloud function and one custom action, and you're good to go. Except I was doing this already. I have a method in the Flutterflow starter kit that will watch the Firebase auth token and when it changes, I mint a new Superbase token using the Superbase JWT secret. Therefore, in terms of effort, nothing has really been saved for me. If you want to use Firebase with Superbase in Flutterflow, you're writing code, or at least stealing my code. Except Superbase are charging extra for this service per user. The end result here is that this new Superbase feature, at least for me, is not the game changer that I was hoping for. In fact, I don't think I'm actually going to use it at all. I'm basically just paying Superbase to do pretty much exactly what I was already doing for free. There's custom code that has to be written, and that's just how it is. If you'd like to see how I do this, check out my free article on the subject. Link is in the description. 
And if you'd like to have a full working project with all of this already implemented, so you can just have the Firebase Superbase combo working out of the box, as well as API notifications, login flows, and an admin dashboard, consider grabbing a copy of the Flutterflow starter kit, link also in the description. I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on this topic. Has the Firebase Superbase issue been a problem for you? And what have you been doing to try to solve it? And if you'd like to get more detail on this topic and dive into some code examples, be sure to check out this video next. Thanks for watching.